The following podcast contains explicit language. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Carrie. Okay, Jesus fucking motherfucking Mother Christ, fuck. y'all. Jesus Christ, I, I shit. Fuck. What the hell, even? Shit. My God. goddamn God. son of a... Fuck it. Fuck it all. Fuck it all, Jesus. Jacob. All right. What the fuck? Oh, I'm such a fucking peasant. There's no words that I really have other than, like, da, Which isn't a word at all, but it really just sort of, like, I don't know. That's all my soul can handle. Yep. <sighs> and on that note, yeah, which, which may or may not get edited out, I don't even give a shit. No, I think that goes <laughs> in. I think I'll do what I what I I talked about and have a little. Uh, the following podcast contains adult language, <laughs> and then that, and then Good. we can get started. Yeah. So um, I do want to mention that the book that we read. Um, Lola and the Boy Next Door uh, by Stephanie Perkins is the light read that I really needed. <laughs> um, I've read this book, I don't know how many times now, six, seven, eight times. It's a, it's a really fast read. And it's sort of like, oh, I'm feeling sad today. I might as well read Lola. Mm-hmm. And so I've been really sad lately and a little despondent. Um, and so it, it's sort of... Uh, fortuitous that Lola and the boy next door was our next book. I agree. I think that worked out well. Um, I'm glad that it was, I'm glad that it was a book that we actually liked. (laughs) Well, there are lots of books that I like. It's just none of them you choose. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Although on what is it? April 6th, 2018, we will be in the same town to watch, um, the movie version of A Wrinkle in Time. So I am yeah. I'm pretty excited about this. It's in my calendar. It's in mine as well. I almost requested it off of work and then I realized that... Uh, I think we got time. That would completely confuse everyone. <laughs> yeah, so do you want to talk about some Lola? Yeah, you know what? Uh, to hell with the introductions. Uh, let's just get to it. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to the introductions when we're good and goddamn ready. That's right. It'll be the last thing you hear on this podcast. <laughs> so, oh, by the way, y'all are listening to a fucking podcast. Um, okay, so Lola and the Boy Next Door. Door. Doy? Door. <laughs> the Boy Next Door. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Perkins, uh, published in 2011. Sequel, or sort of sequel, anyway. Sort of sequel. It, it works alongside of Anna and the French Kiss, whereas... Isla and the Happily Ever After um, sort of serves as a direct sequel to both. Yeah, I haven't read that one yet. Um, Dude. So. <laughs> I'm, I appreciate you letting that pass. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let it slide. All right. um, so where should we start? What did you think about the book? Uh, just start. You know, I love this book. Um, it's, it's a, I think it's sort of a hit or miss type of book for people. Uh, for me, it's all hit all the time. Um, what did you think? So I started reading it, like, I think shortly after we recorded the last episode. Mm-hmm. And I had a little trouble getting into it. And I think that at the time, I recognized that that was because I was in kind of a, I don't know, kind of a cranky mood and just wasn't in the right mood to it. And the way that Stephanie Perkins, I feel like, opened both this book and Lo- and uh, um, Anna, Anna is, like... To introduce you to the pro- protagonist in the way, in a way that makes you be like, am I really going to be reading a book where this is the narrator the entire time? <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I had a little trouble with it, and I was like, I think I just need to set this aside and then come back to it later when I'm in a different frame of mind. So that's what I did. And then the second time, I like, you know, the beginning didn't bother me in the same way it did before, you know, and I enjoy. I got into it. I enjoyed it. And then um, one of the things that's in my notes is I just made a list of parts of the book that made me cry. There's like a big list. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know that I'm a sap. I do. I mean, I'm the one who's choosing these books and I'm not crying. No, I, I just have a lot of emotions. I have many feels, Carrie, especially <laughs> right about, now. Do you want to talk about your feels? Well, okay. So, um so the first thing was uh, chapter 27, which is like two-thirds of the way through the book or more. Mm-hmm. And that's when Lola decides to try to be a better person, basically. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, she does. And, 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 and it's not really what she needs to do in reality, but she thinks somehow that she's, she's done the universe wrong right? and she needs to atone for it in, in a way. Um, and, and so she does things like meet cricket and, um, cricket's niece at the park and, and brings cricket a coffee. And that's her, I'm um, being a good person thing. Right. But like she asks him, you know, about his family and stuff in, in ways that she had before. And, mm-hmm. you know, not everything that she does is correct. Like she, Decides to stop dressing in costumes, which is wrong. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she tries to be, like, kind of a better daughter to her dads and and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that that I was touched. So that was uh, chapter 27. And then next I have uh, chapter 28. When Cricket tells Lola that he misses her costumes. That got me. Mm, that that's that's a good one. Chapter twenty nine, uh, when Nora and Lola talk, uh, have their sort of talk where they kind of are working towards de- actually developing a kind of mother daughter relationship, um, in their weird little way. Uh, chapter 31, Calliope and Lola, like, have this sort of talk about cricket and, you know, they've sort of hated each other throughout the whole book and they kind of work on that. Uh, and Lola makes the awesome costume. She does. And, um, Calliope says she's going to break her face if she hurts her brother's feelings. So, um. Yeah, I like that. I kind of liked Calliope at that point. I know. Calliope, like. Is still kind of a jerk and yet becomes more a lot more sympathetic. Like that's kind of what happens a lot in these last chapters. That you know, like Lola's mom is not super sympathetic necessarily through a lot of the book, but she becomes kind of more of a person to Lola and to us, and Mm -hmm. you know, is clearly kind of doing her best in her own way. Yeah, there's you know earlier in the book, you know when when Nora first shows up and she's yelling and the whole neighborhood can hear. You know, Lola runs upstairs and starts crying and she tells one of her dads, um, who is Nora's brother and technically her, uh, Lola's uncle. Um, you know, I, I hate her sometimes, and he just says, "Yeah, you know what? Sometimes I do too." And so there's nothing about Nora that we're supposed to like at least at first, until, you know, you're right, she becomes more of a person to Lola. Yeah, and she actually invites her over to watch Calliope um, do her long-form competition in the outfit that um, Lola designed or created from scratch, really. Mm -hmm. Um, So that made me cry, too. (laughs) And then... (laughs) Oh, and then... Oh, see... Can I tell you what gets me every time? Tell me. Every single time. When they're going to the winter ball yep. and he gives her the locket. Uh-huh. Oh, every time. Yeah. So it's, you know, this big sort of pocket watch size contraption that he built because he is like his um, lying, thieving, great, great grandfather, uh, Alexander Graham Bell. He is an inventor. And... um he makes her the universe and oh, every time feels. Yep. So that's my, that's my feels. Yep. Let's get back to yours. Oh, well, you know, I mean, we're running out of book, so we're running out of feels <laughs> too. When she like has the costume meltdown and then cricket like helps her out. Um, one of the things I, I like about this book, which I think was true of Anna and the French kiss too, but Maybe not to the same extent, or maybe I'm just not remembering it right. But, like, Cricket and Lola are just, like, so horny for each other. Oh, God, yeah. It's really palpable. Yeah, like, immediately horny for each other. Like, like, you know, she says, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. And she sees him in the record store right after she knew that he moved next door. And she's like, oh, I'm going to the record store. He shows up there and is just like, whoa. Like, y'all, um, I don't know why you're even bothering with this whole boyfriend thing, Lola. Uh, you might as well just bang the dude. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of like I, um, I think uh, that both of the these books, like you know, there's this kind of thing in romantic comedies where um, there's something that keeps these two people apart from each other, even though they're perfect for each other, and then at the end whatever it is is overcome and they get together of course i mean there has to if there wasn't any sort of conflict there wouldn't be a book right so i feel like in these books and i think i might have said even said this in our discussion of anna uh you know kind of the obstacle is just that they're like dumb teenagers that don't know what the hell they're doing yeah (laughs) which true to my high school experience i have to say I'd, I'd have to agree. I, I was a I was an idiot um, in so many different ways. Uh, one of the things that I so I read I read the book uh, and finished it Monday morning, and then I reread it in kind of a hurry mm-hmm. just because I wanted to take some more notes about it. And I found I think that rereading it, one of the things that I noticed on rereading it that I think makes it repay rereading is you know you talked about how he gives her the universe Mm -hmm. basically and he talks about how she talks to the moon and then he he sort of associates her with the stars Mm -hmm. and then when you read it again you just see all these all the star stuff (laughs) like yeah in his dorm room there's a there's a map of constellations on the wall and stuff and you're like oh man like you got it bad buddy (laughs) yeah uh yeah so Basically, y'all, uh, we got a couple of main characters. We've got Lola. She lives in San Francisco with her two dads and um, her her mom, who shows up not drunk, maybe drunk. We don't know. Um, Cricket Bell, who is the the you know boy next door. Um, he had moved away for a while. Um, I think during her her freshman year of high school, right after her. No, right after his birthday, she had gotten him uh, something nerdy that he needed um, for his birthday. And then his twin sister, Calliope, chose to not invite um, Lola to Cricket's and, and Calliope's birthday. So he disappears and she spends the next two and a half years being real pissed off. And you know what? I'm a little pissed off, too. And you know why? He didn't. He could like he could have done so many fucking things. Yeah. If he's really pining over this woman for two and a half years, this is not the 1930s. He could have fucking emailed her, texted, called, carrier pigeon, something like something could have, or he could have just grown some goddamn balls and said, "Hey, Calliope, where's Lola?" Let me go check next door to see if she's there. Mm-hmm. But instead, he's just a dumb bunny. And two and a half years later, he's like, well, why, why is she not like me? Why she got a boyfriend? I'm like, eh, well, you, you, could, you could have called, bud. That's true. Or, I mean, I guess they didn't have the, each other's phone numbers, but. Um, it's, it's not like it would have been that hard to figure out. He knows the address. He could send a letter. He could have sent a letter. Uh, he could have figured out. um the city pie guy email address or website. And, yeah. You know, there there are ways. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for someone who is as smart as Cricket Bell, oh, my God, he's so stupid. So that really bothered me. And, you know, I can sort of understand, you know, Lola not having a way to contact him. He's being homeschooled um, because they're following – Calliope's trainers all over the country and, and all of that stuff. So like, I can sort of understand her not being able to contact him. And plus she's the one whose feelings are hurt. So why would she want to contact him? She feels like, Oh, this guy who I really liked totally fucking dissed me and, um, fuck that noise. Mm -hmm. But he could have done something and he, he didn't. And that really bothered me, but yet he's so dreamy and I want to make out with him. (sighs) <sighs> Fair enough. <laughs> hey, he's 18. It's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It well, is the only legal relationship in this book. Because uh, Lola's boyfriend is 22. Oh, my God. The uh, <laughs> Max. Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. Would you I, like to talk about Max? Oh, yeah. Why not? Uh Max is, as uh, 
as Carrie says, uh, 22 years old, and is basically a walking red flag. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Like everything about him is just like, oh, oh I don't think so. So I had uh, I had written down as a possible topic of debate, like Max, total creep or worst person ever. <laughs> 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 okay, so yes, total creep. Yes, worst person ever. Okay, um, that, that was a short debate. Yeah. Um, so, so Max, he's 22, but he likes the 17 year old girl and and has to deal with her her dad's um, at Sunday brunch every week just to be able to hang out with this girl. And so you're like, what sort of 22 year old like? wants to have a girlfriend with a 10 o'clock curfew. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, let's just start there and go from, you know, not legal, really not legal, like a, a lot of time difference between them where it's not like, you know, someone's 38 and the other person's 42. Like when you're 17, that five years difference is Huge. It's five years, right? Um, y'all, I'm, I'm bad at math. 17 plus five is 22, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I have a math degree. <laughs> I don't. So I, I, I guess I just, there are things about him that you're like, that's not okay. So he, he works as a meter maid uh, for the, the city of San Francisco. I thought he was a meter reader. Uh, whatever. Okay. So he also has a, a a big, cool 1960s car that Lola thinks is, is bitching. And uh, he's in a band. Yes. He also, according to her, is so smart because he reads all these philosophers and, and so smart, so smart. And he puts his glasses on and he's so sensitive and he understands her. Fuck that shit. Stephanie Perkins is like so good at having someone describe their boyfriend in in ways that are positive that let you know that the guy is just like a piece of trash mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and and you know like anna says in this book doesn't she say it like oh musician or no it's etienne who's like oh musician boyfriends i don't think so <laughs> yeah because you know anna in anna and the french kiss had that musician that she was pining over back in um atlanta Tope. that was totally a chode um <laughs> Sort yes. of like Max. <laughs> so, uh, do you remember what Max's uh, tattoo is? Um, let me think. Oh, I remember what it is. It is Max and where the wild things are uh -huh. because he's a sensitive little bitch. Because he's a little boy in a white wolf suit. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> and so, I mean, Lola loses her virginity to him, but not not in the course of this book. But she has already had sex with this man and then um he gets rid of his his car and gets a van like you do when you're a creeper he uh is not very attentive to her needs um no he is not um like she says i know that it takes a while for the woman to learn to enjoy sex i was like oh god and then she's like i hope i enjoy it soon like, oh uh. Fuck, no. It's because you're with the 22-year-old who is so self-centered, he couldn't care less. All he wants to do is call you Lolita and then sing... Um, I saw her standing there, yeah. I saw her standing there. She was just 17, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that was like really... I don't know. For some reason, that moment was the moment where I was just like, I just cannot be having with this at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a no. Holy crap, no. Um, yeah, but she thinks he's so sensitive and he understands her because his parents are fucked up too. And so so he gets the whole uh, Nora thing. Um, but he treats her friends like shit. No, it's like really, I mean, not that I know a lot about it, but it just seems like a lot of the things he does is just kind of classic abusive, you know, like trying to isolate her from her friends and everything is her fault. Mm -hmm. And so she has, to, she has to apologize yeah. for, for things that are, are normal. Right. Like hanging out with her friends is normal. Hanging out with even a guy friend is normal, except, you know, okay, they, they do want to, to do the banging, but, um, I mean, at least he's her age. 
<sighs> and he's nice. Stupid, but nice. So anyway, Max is pretty much the worst. And um, I wrote him a song. I can't wait to hear the song. <laughs> Do you mind if I sing it? Um, I, I would. I would love if you sing it because um, I'm. I'm just going to open up the lyrics real quick so I can. I can sing along, but I'm not going to sing, y'all. Don't ever ask me to sing. I'm just going to pretend. Okay. All right. So the con- So uh, Carrie mentioned the glasses thing. This is one of those. Uh, I feel like those telling details, which um, Lola says admiringly, but which you read and you're just like, huh, come on. Um, yeah, because Lola actually needs her glasses. She's badass blind without them, um, either her glasses or her contacts. However, he says, this is something we have in common. Terrible vision. I love it when he wears his glasses. Badass rocker meets sexy nerd. He only wears them off. Off stage, unless he's playing an acoustic number, then they add the necessary touch of sensitivity. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! Guess what? We both wear glasses. (laughs) We do. We're so sensitive. (laughs) I mean, I guess all my numbers are acoustic numbers, so it's true. And you do, you do have that that this this glass for the um, the touch of sensitivity. So, oh god, he's so terrible. All right, let me hit my guitar. (laughs) I love this. It's going to be the best. Can you hear the guitar all right? I sure can. All right. I have to get in the right mood for this. (laughs) This is the song I wear glasses to Because I always want to see you melt Because I'm so sensitive I wear these glasses to show the world that I don't mind looking like a nerd as long as I can see you. I'm not gonna wear them when I'm rocking out. That's not what these glasses are all about. The non-glasses me has a wild side. Don't try to tame him, cause he'll never die. So then there's like a guitar solo for like 15 minutes or something. Yeah. Uh, and then, I can't. Uh, I'm really excited about that part. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, let's see. Then we get back to this thing. Stare into these glasses, come into my van. We'll make sweet love all according to plan. Because I'm so sensitive. That's right, I'm so sensitive. You know I'm so sensitive, god damn it. Why don't you believe that I'm so sensitive? You know what? Go fuck yourself, because I'm so sensitive. You're motherfucking sensitive. Uh, that, you know, that's the message of that song. I don't know if it comes through. <laughs> oh, so Max is the worst. Uh, I think that is a, a full stop answer. Um, there's, there's really no debating it. Max is the worst. Okay. Resolved. Max is the worst. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. So what do we think about Cricket Bell? Cricket, uh, I think it's funny that um, in Lola, the romantic lead was, uh, the male lead was super short and Cricket is super tall. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, oh, man, Etienne is two inches taller than me and Cricket is a uh, foot and two inches <laughs> taller than me. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Not including hair. Right, right. That's a good point. Valid point. Yes. It's specified in the book. Multiple times. Yep. His hair makes him just that much taller. So, yeah, Cricket is the boy next door, and he's tall and skinny, and their their bedrooms are right next to each other, so they can talk all night and, and be swoony. And Eventually, he can put a bridge down and come over. Now... 
are they supposed to live in one of the painted are, are they in painted ladies basically i don't know what that means okay so those are the the, the the really pretty, fancy Victorian houses in in San Francisco that are always like on postcards. Oh, okay. Because he's really like his family is really fucking rich, and Lola's parents aren't super rich, but they inherited um, the house from Lola's grandmother. Just the fact that they've they've got a lot of money and their houses are right next to each other, like super super close. And I was like. Am I supposed to believe that it's one of those houses? Because that would be awesome mm-hmm. and also completely unbelievable. <laughs> but I don't I don't know San Francisco and I don't know the neighborhood other than that it's right near Dolores Park. Yeah, is that a real place? Yes, it is a real place. Oh it is. Okay. Okay, so they're actually in the mission. I forgot about that. Anyway, so yeah, so there it's uh, two blocks south of Mission Dolores, which is at the western edge of the Mission District. And so yeah, Cricket lives next door, and they're close enough where he can put the the bridge down, which is really just a, a, a ladder that he climbs across. Um, and they become BFFs slash secret love interests, but not really because she's not a cheating person yeah she wants to be she really wants to be <laughs> um and then eventually um she breaks up with with max and tells cricket that that he's she's not ready because she's empty and she wants to give him a a full lola very dramatic very teenager so dramatical yeah but um and, and of course he's like but also like not a terrible idea frankly no, no. <laughs> i mean it's actually really you know in that regard it's super smart like you don't want to just you know hop on to the guy, even if, you know, he's the right guy r- rather than the wrong guy. I mean, maybe even more so just because you don't necessarily want to be him to be like a rebound more. So much. Yeah. So she, she says, Oh gosh, what is it like? Um, you know, do you believe in second chances? And he's like third, fourth, whatever you need. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. Barf! But yet I eat it up like it's ice cream. I love it. I know. I know. Like, Cause it's so sappy and it's so dumb, but it makes me just like think, Oh, I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to go to San Francisco <laughs> and I'm going to meet the love of my life. Sorry, Peter. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be beautiful. <sighs> Because I love Cricket Bell that much. Mm-hmm. More than Etienne. So much more than Etienne. And I love Etienne. Yeah. I think, so I mentioned to you an email that I have some crackpot theories of this, about this book. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, I don't, I don't know how crackpot they are. But uh, one of them is, so do you remember Erin uh, Redacted's criticism of Anna and the French Kiss? She felt like um, it really seemed like there was some background of abuse in at, you know, between Etienne and his father. Oh, yeah. And she felt like that wasn't really addressed in the book. And it's something that he and Anna should have discussed, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully I'm not doing any disservice to uh, her very fine email. So one of the things about this book is, like, everyone's got kind of these issues and it all comes out. Like, everyone's talking to everyone about <laughs> You know, and I was like, okay, so, right. So uh, I'm adopted, but my mother is still around and she's homeless a lot of the time. And, but, you know, and everyone knows about it. And then there was like, okay. And, and, uh, Calliope's problem is that she keeps choking when she's doing these important things and she can never seem to get two things, you know, so that's her problem. And, and, you know, like everyone, yeah. we, everyone knows what everyone's problem is by the end of the book, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I appreciated to, to me about, that I appreciated to me about cricket, is that a sentence that, is that a phrase that just, that's, that's, I think we need to pull that apart and maybe put it back together in a different way. Okay. Um, (laughs) one of the things about cricket that I appreciated, although I wasn't sure that it was totally realistic for an 18 year old, but you know, cricket is magic Mm -hmm. is that um, is very clear that when he gets, you know, when he sees her again, he decides very quickly, like, 
just all the cards are on the table and I'm just going to tell her everything. Yeah. And so like there's several times where he's just like, so here's my deal right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to know this and uh, this is what it is. And if it's fine, then that's great. And if it's not, then we probably, you know, then I can just leave. And uh, I thought that was great because it's kind of rare, like that people will be that honest with each other about their feelings. Um, and it eliminates one of the, you know, one of the usual kind of romantic comedy sort of things, which is the misunderstanding due to lack of communication. You know, here everyone is pretty much, okay, here's what's going on. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, what was it like the, the, the day he saw her in the, the record store he's like okay so i want to see you every day <laughs> like like card yeah right cards out on the table like this is what i want we cool <laughs> and she's like oh fuck i got a boyfriend but yeah and then later on when they like go for their 3 a.m walk in the park mm -hmm. um he says are you going to say what's on your mind or are you going to make me guess because i'm not good at guessing games people should say what they mean to say and not make other people stumble around and, uh, and Lola's like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like eventually she kind of has her showdown with Max and they're very honest with each other in a way that makes her be like, oh, yeah, I don't even know what the hell I was doing with this guy. Uh, well, she ended up having really two showdowns with him. So it was the it was the breakup showdown. Yeah. And then and then the. You know, I had to go see him one last time showdown where he told her where he, he was for the last week yeah. or month or however long he was gone, um, where he was out sleeping with some chick. A woman, Carrie. That's what he said. Oh, a woman. Yes, a woman. Whereas Lola is just a mere girl. Oh, don't worry. The woman didn't come either, Lola. <laughs> yeah. I <sighs> Musicians, so dreamy. <laughs> I thought... I might just point out, I, I started making a list of some fun details, and then I realized that it was going to be too long. Okay. But I just wanted to list a few things that I enjoyed, you know, because Stephanie Perkins knows how to turn a phrase mm -hmm. in a way that seems, I don't know, just just pretty spot on. So one is, um, I didn't know it was possible to pass a dish of vegetarian lasagna with such hostility. <laughs> uh, I appreciated... Um, Cricket's roommate's desire to uh, decorate every possible surface with pictures of naked women straddling tigers. Mm -hmm. Very naked good. tiger lady. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the whole book is, you know, right after she goes um, to see him at school and, you know, they, they finally exchange phone numbers and, you know, he says, okay, I put I put my number in your phone. It's Naked Tiger Woman. She's like, really? I put it in as Naked Tiger Lady. Um, he's like, really? <laughs> well, no, I put it in as Lola. <gasps> <laughs> and I love that because it wasn't so cheesy where it was like, oh, my God, we totally did the same thing. Yeah, I agree. That was great. Do you want to talk about pies? Oh, yeah, let's talk about I, pies. I know you want to talk about pies. So I make pies myself. Yes. And I would say that one of the... <laughs> One of the most shocking things the first time I read the book is when uh, Lola says, you know, that the business gets started because one of her dads, I forget which one. Was it Andy? I think you're right. I think it was Andy. Takes a handmade cherry pie to a party and everyone is amazed because they've never had a pie with homemade crust before. And I was like, <laughs> what horrible dystopia is this? <laughs> So basically, you're going to have to be a pie guy because no one in in the whole city has ever had a homemade pie before. Yeah. It's going to be just all you. I also wondered how many of the pies that they described you would actually eat. None. I hate pie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I wish I liked pie because I love sweet things. I hate pie crust as a as general rule. Yeah. So, um if it is pie with, with like a chocolate filling, I will eat the filling and leave the crust. Um, so really, I should just have a bowl of mousse. Well, there, one of the things he made was a vegan apple crumble. Hell no, I wouldn't eat that. Yeah. Okay. You, you lost me at vegan? <laughs> yeah, well, and I And then agree. I heard the word apple, and I was like, oh. Uh, nope. 
All right. Crumble? I don't know. Maybe I'll eat the streusel shit on top. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think part of my problem was, uh, you know, also that I don't like pumpkin pie, and I also don't like sweet potatoes. So several of his pies included those as ingredients, and I was like, not interested. Uh, and then the vegan apple crumble, the vegan part is a little concerning. You have a <laughs> vegan thing that is good. I make a vegan pie. Yeah. I don't eat pie, but I make a vegan pie. Yeah, it's very tasty. It's chocolate. Oh, thank you. Yeah. One thing that I thought was really sort of hard to believe was it was it was towards the beginning of the book. Cricket had just moved back. Um, Lola and he weren't weren't friends yet, and he just kind of loped into the house, offering his assistance to help um, Andy finish up a bunch of pies for this um, for this big event. And I'm just like. Even with three people working their tails off, can you really make 10 each of five, you know, like 50 total pies in not a very long amount of time? Like, even just to assemble them must take a while, and then you got to bake them all. I can't imagine, even if they're, a, 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 you know, even though he is a pie maker, I don't think they've got like 10 ovens in their house. It's like, really, this is not a a two-hour shindig here. I mean, they might have a couple of ovens. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure, like, you know, some of the stuff was pre-prepped, and, you know, he probably had um, many of the pies done. But the fact that they still had to make all those pies, and Lola the whole time is like, oh, my God, Cricket Bell is in my house, holy shit. Yeah, you have to, you know, like, for an apple pie, you would have to cook it probably for, like, 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. or so so um yeah that that would be a. I don't think you could do it okay still want to go back to how dreamy lo- uh cricket bell is all right yes okay. i'm sorry that we distracted from the yeah. main point purpose of this episode okay everybody carrie is in love with an imaginary <laughs> person <laughs> cricket bell is he's nerdy he's tall he's skinny he's He's a total fucking hipster. Like, let's just get it all out there. He draws stars on his hands for the lady he loves. He has all these elastics on his on his wrists and and big chunky watches and tight tight pants to show off his his tight <laughs> tight butt. Like, I love the bell, and I wish he was my next door neighbor. <laughs> There's a surprising amount of talk about butts in this book. So many butts. <laughs> it's like Tina Belcher wrote this shit. <sighs> yeah, he talks about, uh, well, she talks about his butt a lot, and then she imagines him looking at her butt. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, we're in the same car. Can he see my butt? No, bitch, he can't. You are sitting down. <sighs> Oh, I appreciated uh, your observation in email that um, this book, kind of similarly to Awoken, kind of has its climax at the pumpkin ball. Mm-hmm. It most certainly does. Pretty good. He does take her to the pumpkin ball, um, whereas um, we all know that Cthulhu will not take, what's her name? He cannot, he take, cannot take her to the pumpkin ball. Andromeda. Andromeda Slate. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Cricket Bell does take um, Lola Nolan to to the to the party where she is dressed up as um, a Lola version of Marie Antoinette, um, and Cricket Bell, who shows up last minute, um, dashing as always, um, has his two short pants showing that he is wearing socks exactly the same color as her dress. Oh swoon! Oh swoon! <laughs> And he takes her to the ball, and they make out so damn much. Right. Finally. So do you remember how the book starts? I would like you to read the first few paragraphs of it, and then we could talk about them. Okay. I have three simple wishes. They're really not too much to ask. The first is to attend the winter formal dressed like Marie Antoinette. I want a wig so elaborate it could cage a bird. And a dress so wide, I'll only be able to enter the dance through a set of double doors. But I'll hold my skirts high as I arrive to reveal a pair of platform combat boots so that everyone can see that. 
underneath the frills. I am punk rock tough. Yes. Okay. So discuss that. <laughs> check, basically, right? Yep. Check. All right. Uh, but also, that was, as I said, the first time I read the book, that was a little bit of a tough open <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second. The second is for my parents to approve of my boyfriend. They hate him. They hate his bleached hair with its constant dark roots. And they hate his arms, which are tattooed with sleeves of spider webs and stars. They say his eyebrows condescend and that his smile is more of a smirk. They're sick of hearing his music blasting from my bedroom and they're tired of fighting about my curfew whenever I watch his band playing clubs. Yeah, well, they're right. So there's that. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> terrible. And, you know, they don't necessarily love Cricket either because he was caught sleeping in her bed. Yeah. So, you know, check minus. You know, I didn't notice before that he has tattoos of stars. Yeah, I think I probably hadn't even thought about it before either, but then... We were just talking about how stars yeah. keep uh, showing up. So I'm like, oh, stars, look at that. Well, by the end, they, they basically approve of cricket, it seems like. Well, they, they do. Yeah, they come around. Yes. So the th- wish number three. To never, ever, ever see the Bell Twins ever again, ever. Well, you know, two out of three isn't bad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be seeing a lot of one of them twins. Yeah. Uh, actually, I she saw a lot of both of them because she did have to basically strip Calliope down naked. Take her measurements. Anyway. And uh, the scene where she's talking to um, Cricket uh, and he's just wearing his boxer briefs, that was kind of hilarious to me as well. <laughs> he's so fucking oblivious. He's like, um, well, crap. I'm just going to duck out of you for a moment, please. Excuse <laughs> me. Thank you very much. <sighs> All right. So this is... A book that we both really liked and was a good post-election book to read. It was. It, it felt like, it feels like home. It feels like hope. It feels like safety and love, and which is so cheesy to say. But it's like, it's an easy, sweet book. It's an innocent book for the most part. And um, it makes me really happy on the inside. Yeah, and it... You know, I mean, since since the election, uh, my <laughs> my emotional state has not been completely stable. Oh no, is perhaps why I I basically <laughs> cried for the last third of the book. But um, it was it was definitely kind of funny because I read the book and then I decided I needed a little break for myself mm-hmm. for most of yesterday, and then today I kind of spe- speed read the whole thing. Yeah, and I was like, well, we'll have the same effect this time around and then i i hit chapter 27 you know reading at top speed and then i'm like oh yep totally is yep <laughs> there they go old waterworks yeah anyway well i mean it's it's not like this election is is um yeah this is this is not really gonna fix anything but it's at least gonna help me forget for a few hours yeah i was thinking about how how you know most of the time pre-election um, you know, I'd be working on or something and I would be like, oh, I need to take a little break and take my mind off the, off the st- stuff. And so then I would open up Facebook and read it and it would, uh, you know, there would be pictures of people's babies or cats or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, but now I go into Facebook and it's just like, it, it's not that relaxing anymore. No, it's like, well, here's a shit show. Yeah. Oh, well, look, more of a shit show. Oh, great. Let's Let's read more about this shit show. Yeah. So do you remember what book we're reading next? I don't remember what book we're reading next. Uh, I'm not sure I do either. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. It's uh, what is it? It's Boys Don't Knit. <gasps> it's Boys Don't Knit. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Boys Don't Knit. Uh, I guess its official name is Boys Don't Knit in Public. I have heard some things about this book. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not because none of the things I've heard are particularly positive. Uh, I mean, I read it. I, 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 it's, I'm not sure that we'll have a ton to say, to say about it, but I think it's a pleasant enough. <laughs> yeah, that was that's a super great endorsement yeah. right there. But yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to talk about it, but it's not the worst fucking book we've ever read. <laughs> I mean... Okay. Basically, uh, the people I know who read it read it as a beach read, 
and I think it's good for that. And okay. it might be a good take your mind off things for a little while type book as well. Hey, it got all of 3.82 stars on Goodreads. So, <laughs> oh. I mean, it's not the worst. Yeah. So, Boys Don't Knit in Public by T.S. Easton. Uh, it's 273 pages, so you can read it real quick. Mm -hmm. And I would say, yeah, read it. I mean, you have to read it because we have this I, I do. <laughs> it's required. But uh, I think people out there may enjoy it as well. Um, geez, I forget how we end this thing. So, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this bullshit. Uh, yeah. I was going to thank you, Carrie, for uh, having me read uh, Lola, which I really enjoyed. I'm so glad you liked it. I know it's super cheesy, and I know it's a romantical book. And I know I'm not really the most romantical person in the world, but yet at the same time, Something about Stephanie Perkins' books, they just feel like a warm sweater, and, you know, sometimes you need a warm sweater. And uh, let's see, we should thank the Sentimental Favorites, who we steal a bit of their song, Hey There, for our intro and occasionally our our outro. And um, Shannon Garrity makes, made our icon. I think we haven't mentioned that in a while, but she did a great job i know it's lovely and it makes me very happy every time i see it i'm a character in her webcomic i might have mentioned that i before. love that car character yeah skin horse <laughs> i'm a mad scientist i need a yeti yes you do uh no listener mail this time or contest entries but there is a contest and if you want to st us to stop talking about it you should probably write some lyrics and send them in no, just i even care just make it as, as ridiculously shitty as possible and you'll win right i mean you heard what i wrote for this episode uh, it took like half an hour this morning <laughs> when i should have been doing something else so no this was this was a perfect use of your time actually it, it's 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 a, it's a wonderful song and i think it's gonna be um a real hit for max's band oh yeah yeah he can wear his glasses and he'll get some poor woman to go out to his van with him. He's just the worst. He's a class act all around. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> um, so I think that's more or less it. Uh, you know, I I love YA like crazy and I love you like crazy, Carrie. Oh, I love YA and I love you. And it's always great to talk to you. Um, yeah, I, I really needed this. Me too. Hey there. Hey. Hey there. Hey. Hey there. Hey. Where were you yesterday? I tried to call. Hey there. Hey. Hey there. Hey. Hey. There. Okay, uh, is there anything else we should record? Or um, Do we have to do an intro? I feel like... Or, I, or is our intro good? I, I'm kind of fine with the intro being non-existent the way it is. It makes sense for today. Yeah. <laughs> it, may be, it may scare a few people off. But well, you know what? That's all right. I, 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 think, I think it'll be fine.